Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us move on to the next problem. So, this problem appeared in 2014, December 2014. So, here the question is the major product formed in the following reaction is an ether. We have a aryl derivative given here and this undergoes reaction with the secondary butyl lithium in the first step and in the second step there is a carbon dioxide and acidic conditions are given. So, when this reaction occurs, what is the product that will be formed? That is the question. So, here we have four different products. Uh, the final products all are carboxylic acid, having a carboxylic acid unit in the final product. So, the first one we have a carboxylic acid which is uh, meta to both the existing substituents and in the product uh, or the option B, we have the carboxylic acid which is ortho to the methyl group and in the other one it is ortho to the ether and in the last one we, it is in between both the ether unit and the methyl uh, carb methyl. So, we have four different products that is formed in this reaction. We have to find out what is the product that will be formed in this particular case. So, when we talk about a secondary butyl lithium, secondary butyl lithium is little bit bulkier compared to N butyl lithium. So, here the lithiation occurs mainly at the less hindered ortho position. So, when the less hindered ortho position undergoes lithiation, so we have uh, multiple positions. We can assume that we have one here, we have another one here and we also have another one here. So, there are uh, one, two, three, three ortho positions are there with respect to the substituents. Uh, between uh, methyl group and the ether, the ether is much more uh, it can act both like a electron withdrawing group as well as its minus I effect will also be present and it is also a electron re releasing effect will also be present. So, the ether oxygen behaves like both the minus I effect group and the plus M effect group and we have the methyl group which is having only the plus I effect. So, with respect to that which carbon is going to be easily attacked is basically the ortho hydrogen and because of the presence of a methyl group this is not a easily approachable site. So, this is a hindered site whereas this ortho position is the least hindered site. So, that is the reason the secondary butyl lithium abstract the proton from this particular carbon. So, that end, ends up with the lithiation on the ortho position. So, the second step is dry ice or the solid uh, CO2 addition. So, the CO2 adds to the place where the lithium was present here and uh, which was followed by hydrolysis leads to the carboxylic acid derivative. So, this is going to be the final product that will be formed in this particular reaction. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, this problem appeared in June 2016. So, the correct statement about the reaction of X and Y with respect to sodamide R, X is given here, Y is given here. X is a uh, triphenyl substituted uh, methane and uh, Y is a tri, uh, three membered ring containing uh, three phenyl rings and the uh, alkene uh, bond is also present here. So, we have two different uh, product uh, compounds that is X and Y and uh, when we use uh, sodamide that is going to be a strong base and uh, the strong base will basically abstract a hydrogen atom. So, that is what is the thing. So, we have two different intermediate that will be formed after the abstraction of uh, proton. So, here the X will react faster than Y that is a statement number one. The second one is Y will react faster than X and the third one is X and Y behave like Lewis acid and the last statement is X is a strong branched acid than Y. So, there are four combinations given and the answer is going to be both A and C or A and D, B and C or B and D. So, these are all the four permutation combinations possible. So, X may react faster than Y or Y may react faster than X that is one thing and then 
they may behave like a Lewis acid or uh, they behave like a Bronsted acid. So, we have to use both the combination to identify what is the correct statement for this particular reaction with sodamide. So, when the sodamide abstracts a proton, so we end up with a conjugate base. In both the cases, the hydrogen atom is abstracted. So, in the first case, when the hydrogen atom is abstracting this one, so we end up with a carbanion that is formed. And we have a 3 phenyl ring which is attached to this carbon ion. So, there is plenty of resonance structures possible because the negative charge can be now distributed among all the 3 phenyl rings. So, this is going to be a highly stable species. So, whenever in a chemical reaction, one conjugate base that is formed is going to be a highly uh, stable one, then that reaction is going to be a much faster than the other cases. So, in other words, what we can say is, in this particular case, the conjugate base X is highly stable compared to the other one. Why the other one is less stable? Because we have a negative charge on the cyclopropyl ring and we also have a double bond. So, in this particular system, we have totally 2 electrons from this negative charge and 2 electrons from this pi bond. So, we have 4 pi electrons that is present and according to Huckel's rule, 4 pi electron is an anti-aromatic system. So, that means this is going to be a highly unstable system. So, this is basically what we can say is this is anti-aromatic in nature. So, when this is anti-aromatic in nature, this is going to be less stable. Here we have uh, multiple resonance structures possible because of the presence of 3 phenyl ring attached to the carbon ion. So, this is going to be highly stable species. So, what we can say is the first statement is going to be X is uh, reacting faster than Y. So, that we can easily conclude. And the second one is we do not have any Lewis acid that is present here. Lewis acid is basically an electron deficient species, but what we have is a uh, electron rich species. So, we can say that Lewis acid is not at all present here that can be ruled out. So, that means uh, the third option C is also ruled out any answer with the C is not the right one, but X is a stronger branched acid than Y. So, that is the reason the final thing will be X will react faster than Y. Uh, the second one is X is a stronger branched acid than Y. So, this is the answer for this particular question. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, this problem appeared in 2011. So, here the major product A and B in the following synthetic strategy are. So, there is a cyclohexanone is given and there is a, a hydrazine di like a derivative is given here and uh, th this is uh, reacting with the carbonyl compound in the first step. And the second step is uh, reaction with the LDA at minus 78 degree centigrade in the presence of methyl iodide. That gives a product A and this product A on ozonolysis leads to the product B. So, these are all the two uh, the serious uh, reactions that will happen. And we have to identify what are going to be, uh, what are the products A and B in this particular reaction. So, four different combinations are given. In the first one, the carbonyl and this hydrazine uh, combined together to give the intermediate as shown here. This is the intermediate A and this on ozonolysis leads to the alkylation basically on the alpha carbon atom. So, that is a simple uh, thing that is happening. So, here between 1 and 2, the difference is only the stereochemistry of the alkyl group that is attached, that is a methyl group that is attached and in the other two cases, the ozonolysis leads to ring uh, enlargement reaction that is uh, basically a carbonyl compound is converted into the ketone. Uh, that reaction is basically like a Bayer Villager type oxidation reaction. So, we end up with a lactone ring. So, these are all the two different uh, types of reactions that may occur in this particular uh, transformation. So, we are going to find it out what actually happens. So, various steps are given here. Uh, let us start from uh, uh, one by one, uh, the first one. So, the first step is basically the formation of the hydrazone because we have a hydrazine derivative. So, this hydrazine derivative, this hydrogen and this oxygen are lost. I am uh, putting it in a very simple terms. So, uh, this is a multi-step reaction and this loss of water molecule leads to the formation of the hydrazone derivative. So, this is the first step that occurs 
and the most crucial thing in this particular reaction is the second step. So that means this hydrazone is basically deprotonated with LDA to form the aza enolate. So the aza enolate basically happens between this nitrogen, this carbon, this carbon and this hydrogen. So we have two hydrogen atoms in the alpha position. So between these two hydrogen atoms only one of the hydrogen is actually removed and uh, this being a symmetrical molecule what we can say is when the hydrogen is removed the next step is going to be the addition by the uh, methyl iodide that is the alkylation is the next step. So we have to find out when the one of the hydrogen is removed that will be replaced by the lithium and this will be replaced by the methyl MEI. So uh, how this addition actually takes place is the one we have to see and uh, the most important thing is the stereochemistry for this particular reaction. So whether the methyl group adds from the bottom phase or the top phase that is the only thing we have to look for. So when the azo enolate is actually formed. So this azo enolate uh, undergoes alkylation by the methyl iodide and uh, this methylated uh, derivative hydrazone is actually de uh, de uh, generated very uh, easily. So here we have a new chiral center and because of the presence of this uh, methyl group which is at the top, so the top portion is completely blocked. So the methyl group only attacks from the bottom side. So that is the reason if you look at here, the methyl approaches uh, this carbon only from the bottom side and not from the top side because the top side is completely uh, blocked by this particular uh, ring unit. And uh, then Ozone analysis of this uh, hydrazone derivative leads to the carbonyl compound. This in other words what we can say is we started off with the carbonyl compound, we end up with the same carbonyl compound. The only thing is we have introduced the methyl group on this particular case. So, this reaction is very similar to Gilbert stock uh, alkylation reactions. So in those kind of cases what we have is we have a enamine that is formed and that enamine is alkylated by the alkyl halides and then we end up with the corresponding alkyl derivative. But uh, this reaction which is developed by Enders is a stereochemical or the asymmetric version of the same reaction. So here we get uh, very high enantio selectivity in this particular uh, reaction. So this is uh, basically in most of the cases we can easily predict that where the alkylation will take place. So that is the advantage of this particular reaction. So this is called as Enders uh, alkylation reaction. So the reagent that is used is called as a SAMP. The SAMP is nothing but the 1 amino methoxymethyl pyrrolidine. So this is a methoxymethyl pyrrolidine unit. So this is uh, very crucial for this particular reaction and Enders had uh, developed this product and uh, uh, this reaction was first uh, carried out or uh, reported in 1979. Those who are interested in knowing about the asymmetric version of this reaction can look at this uh, original paper and the subsequent papers also can be referred to find out how this reaction actually proceeds.